Hello, Morton Gray here. I'm going to read you a short story about Rolexma. He's tall, the best looking man who comes in here. Wears a Rolex and drives a fancy car. Why on earth would he be interested in me? I make coffee. Mindy hadn't taken his smile seriously. A guy like him wouldn't be interested in her. And she wasn't about to admit to Fran, her work colleague, how much she'd thought about him, fantasised about him. Well, he can't take his eyes off you when he's in the queue and he flirts outrageously with you, even though you seem not to notice. And you haven't seen his face when he finds out you're not working when he arrives. No, he doesn't. And you mean he looks extra happy and smiley when I'm not here? No, sullen and fed up more like. Does he ask for me then? Despite her resolution, she couldn't stop a little spark of hope igniting. Yep, by name, Fran looked triumphant. OK, I don't know quite what to think about that. Mindy went quiet as she processed this information. She never really rated herself. Not since her teenage love had finished with her and she'd flunked her GCSEs. Somehow the two events had defined her life. Well, the last five years anyway. She'd always worked, but in low paid jobs. It wasn't until she discovered she was good at making coffee that she regained some self-confidence and hadn't looked back since. Fran was staring at her with her head on one side. You obviously haven't read enough fairy tales. Fairy tales? When the prince chooses the commoner. Mindy put her hands on her hips with mock indignation. Great, so now you think I'm common. You know exactly what I mean. Oh, Fran, they're called fairy tales for a reason. You have to be young or away with the fairies to believe them. The next day, Mindy opened the shop up early. Rolex man bounded through the door and she felt heat rising to her face. Given her conversation with Fran the previous day. What can I get for you this morning, sir? Americano, please. You still don't recognise me, do you? It was weird how some customers became so familiar that you became sure you knew them from elsewhere or even related, but not this guy. He'd always seemed different, a different style, different class. You are that Mindy, aren't you? He pointed at her name badge. That Mindy? She was definitely bright red now. The Mindy who was Maria in the production of The Sound of Music at school. Mindy felt her eyes open wide as she nodded. Yep, that's me. But how did he know that? You fell off the stage. I caught you, or rather, you landed on me. It couldn't possibly be. It wasn't possible. Liam? Liam Fisher? It was his turn to nod. Mindy began to relive the mortifying incident from her school days. She became hot and bothered just thinking about that disastrous afternoon. But you don't look like Liam at all. Liam was... She stopped as soon as she realised what she was about to say. She'd fallen off the edge of the stage and landed on Liam in the middle of the song Edelweiss. But the Liam Fisher she remembered was the target of classroom jokes. School-wide jokes even. Huge, humongous, yes. I know I look a bit different now, so I don't blame you at all for not recognising me. But you're as lovely as ever, if a bit sadder. Sadder? I've been watching you for a while. Oops, sorry, that sounds awful. Like I'm a stalker or something. I'm not, by the way. It just took me a while to be sure it was you before I said anything. My colleague thought you were watching me. I told her she was imagining it. Guilty as charged. She handed him his drink. So what's your story then? Why the transformation? She clamped her hands over her mouth. 
I'm sorry, that sounded so rude. Not at all. It is, after all, a pretty dramatic transformation. I just decided one day that I was fed up of being the target of jokes and snide comments from members of my own family, let alone at school. I worked hard to get the best examination results, to give me career choices. I stopped eating rubbish. I walked everywhere to get fit and practiced saying yes to every opportunity. Wow, that sounds amazing, especially the saying yes bit. I wish I was brave like you. Not bravery, anyone can do it. It's a mindset. You just say yes loud and clear and work out the whys and wherefores afterwards. Sounds easy, but when you're shy and lacking in confidence, what happened? You used to be full of self-confidence. I mean, when you were Maria in The Sound of Music, for goodness sake. I know, but things can turn on a sixpence, as my granddad always said. Look, maybe we could go out for a drink sometime and you can tell me what happened. Was he asking her for a date? With characteristic hesitancy, Mindy was trying to decide how to reply when the breakfast rush began. Liam stood back to allow her to deal with the influx of customers and when she finally looked up from the copy machine, he'd gone. Still, he'll be back, she thought confidently. As the days went by and there was no sign of Liam, Mindy couldn't quite believe it. He seemed to have gone to great lengths to identify her and to get her alone in the coffee shop. So why give up when they'd finally spoken? Maybe her lack of instant reply to his question had put him off. Despite her disappointment, their conversation had made an impact on her. She'd experimented with saying yes loudly and clearly and was now acting supervisor at the cafe and had been at the cinema with Fran. Why couldn't she have said the important little word when it mattered? When Mindy got to work on Friday, Fran was reading the local newspaper. You'll never believe this. That guy I thought fancied you. The one in the fancy blue sports car. He's only had a nasty accident. Mindy felt the colour drain from her face and the world spin on its axis. Hey, sit down before you fall down, yelled Fran. She made a strong coffee and put it into Mindy's shaking hands. How do you know it was him in the accident? The picture of the car. It's been parked outside the cafe often enough. Fran showed her the article with a smashed up sports car. Mindy felt very sick accident on Monday morning. That must have been just after we'd spoken. You didn't tell me, Fran's tone was accusing. I thought he'd be in for coffee before now, so I didn't think I needed to. The article says he was taken to hospital with injuries. Mindy felt faint again. Who would have thought she would have cared so much about Liam Foster? But then the transformed Liam was so different. Please don't let him be dead. Please don't let him be hurt too badly, she prayed. Just then the cafe door opened and in limped Liam. He had a plaster cast on his one leg and was using crutches. Mindy was up on her feet in seconds and nearly sent the poor man flying as she pulled him close for a hug. Don't ever do that again. He was laughing as he balanced on his one good leg. And what exactly am I supposed not to do again? Scare me like that, just when I decided to say yes. 